Tom McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had nice bars, E-I-E-I-O, E-I-E-I-O, you already know what it is, we finna tap into it. <laughs> Subscribe squad is another day is another dollar it's time for another freaking reaction because that is what we do You look at me and I look at you you look at me and I look at you That is what we do now before we go ahead and react to one of my favorite artists Tom McDonald I need you to do me a favor and hit that like button sub button bell button because you can ring my bell Ring my bell, my bell, ring it, ring it, ring it. That we know every single time, literally every single time that I drop a new video. Now in that, subscribe squad, we have this goal trying to get to 30k subs, 30k subs, so I can drop a new single and a new music video. If you haven't already checked out my music, check out my music by going to Spotify and Apple Music and typing in the word "scribe cash." Also, always trying to get to know you guys better, so do me a favor and text me to 844-278-5224. That is 844-278-5224. Yes, it is me. I will get back to you. There's a bunch of you guys texting me, so I'm trying my best to get back to you as soon as possible. And with that being said, like I said, Tom McDonald's one of my favorite artists. Um, lots of dope music that came out recently this past weekend, but we love Tom. We, we definitely do, because he's a thought-provoking artist. He makes art, he makes art that makes you think. And I am 100% positive that this is going to be very thought-provoking. It is a song called White Trash. And uh, he made it with Mad Child, which I think is a super dope collaboration. And I'm just excited to see what Tom has for us today. So, let's see. This is for my white trash. The ones the whole world hates. The ones who voted for Trump that got labeled racist, but ain't. The ones with... Okay, all right, that's a hell of a nine seconds, okay, for the white trash. And I use quotation marks, you know what I'm saying, because I feel like that t term is could be considered derogatory. And so when I'm using it, I want you to let, let you guys know that I don't mean it in a derogatory way. I'm just quoting what it is that he's saying. And, uh, and he said, the ones that voted for Trump and got labeled as a racist but ain't. All right, let's continue to listen. Let's see what else he has to say. Who voted for Trump that got labeled racist, but ain't the ones with bald calves. Make America great. Who love their country to death and struggle on minimum wage. Hey, they're angry that illegal aliens taking work that maybe they can get. Single parents with some baby kids. Hey. I have a feeling, and I'm calling it right now, there's going to be a sequel. This is going to be, this is not just a one-off video. I'm calling it out. Tom doesn't just make one-off videos. I think this is going to be somehow a sequel that's going to lead to something else. Like, this is my guess. We only 20 seconds in, but this is not going to be the only music video on this topic. Calling it now. Struggle on minimum wage. Hey, they're angry that illegal aliens taking work that maybe they can get. Single parents with some baby kids hated for being a patriot. All my life I've been white trash. All my life it's been like that. The whole world been left leaning. I'm proud of the right who fight back. Been chewed up and spit out. They scream, but no one listens. They're so in love and vote for Trump because politicians. They're our neighbors, they're our soldiers, our men and women and children. They're the middle class families who got forgot by the system. Uh, and God we trust, and all the guns are just back up. I, I like the fact that when he when he makes songs like this, he approaches it from that perspective. I don't know necessarily that this is all of his perspective about his life. I think he's approaching the song from the perspective of a person who feels like this. So with that being said, if he's approaching the song from that perspective, then he's definitely nailing it. Because I think there's a lot of people in America who feel just like that. Got by the system, uh, and God we trust, and all the guns are just back up. Rocking camouflage, don't tread on me, get smoked like tobacco. Yeah, we white trash, we rednecks, crackers since we were young. We grew close, we move slow, these colors don't run, yeah. Call us white trash, like we're someone they know. Call us white trash. The fact that this is a collab with Mad Child, this is just so befitting and I think it's super dope. Yep, I'm white 
bro, I ain't apologize for you don't like that I like my skin. They bleeping his butt out. <laughs> Yeah, they had to add some bleeps to that one, okay? Like, bro, I ain't apologize for you don't like that I like my skin color, then you could. I like. Okay, all right. Well, look, look, okay. That was real descriptive. Color, then you could. I like open gun laws. I like drunken bar brawls. I like drinking Budweiser. I like smoking Marlboro. We monstered up in them monster trucks, rolling in heavy machinery. We all believe in protecting what's up. We got that heavy machinery. Drink beers. He, he said he got the heavy machinery. He with the do 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 do. <laughs> we got that heavy machinery. Drink beers in a lawn chair. Nothing much going on here. Probably get a few long stairs. Look like you don't belong here. Hey, please don't get mad at me. I did not put up the barrier. People are judging me for my exterior. Man, are you serious? Say the word white and they act like the furious. Mad child and I'm sick as White boy in my pickup truck, shotguns my girl. He said, "White boy in my pickup truck." I like this flow, though. White boy in my pickup truck. Da, 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 da. Keep it up, though. White boy in my pickup truck, shotguns my girl's money. I'm a firecracker. We lit it up. We just living our best life. Don't wrap us up some wax scandal. Beer and blood on a white beater, jacked up on Jack Daniels. Get my chicken at Colonel Sanders. That Jack Daniels, you know what I'm saying? That Jack Daniels, that's some strong stuff. That ain't see, that ain't for no, you know what I'm saying? That ain't for no soft people. You know what I'm saying? That Jack Daniels, that, that's a whole different vibe, big dog. That's a whole different vibe. A whole different one. Beater jacked up on Jack Daniels. Get my chicken at Colonel Sanders. Judge me and I'll backhand him. Tom, pass me that red mask and I'll beat his with an axe handle. Call us white trash. Stuck with someone they know. Call us white trash. White trash, you be happy and broke. Then I'm white trash, but I'm not alone. White trash, drinking beer till the night pass. White trash, light a fire. Those boots he has on on the top of that bus, them things are fire. I need me a pair of them, Tom. Matter of fact, you got enough, you know what I'm saying? Just go ahead, sign them things, and put them in the mail for your girl. You know what I'm saying? I did about 50 11 reactions. I ain't asking for them, but I'm saying if you want to gift them to a sister, you go ahead and sign them things and put them in the mail. <laughs> I'm just playing, man. <laughs> Night past white trash, light a fire if it's cold. White trash, we don't want to be high class white trash with a heart made of gold. Call us white trash, like with someone they know. Call us white trash, like we care what we do. Is it white trash? Like, this hook is really fire, though. And this is the sound of this overall, like, the overall sonics of this is just cold. So, I'm rocking with it. Is it white trash? You be happy and broke. Then I'm white trash, but I'm not alone. Alright. Nova killed it again with another dope visual. Another dope one. Uh, supposedly she had co-wrote co the hook, so shout out to her for her involvement in the song as well. Let's not forget about her. Um, okay, my, my digestion of this song, right? Tom has this ability, ability to tap into a perspective, right? Regardless of whose perspective is and, and write a complete song from that person's perspective. So I always, that's what I really enjoy about him. It's just, it's very thought-provoking music. And so... How can we, like, where are we going to start with this? I think the, like, and I put quotes because it's just kind of just like a gener general thing. Like the quote unquote angry white man in America or somebody who is being perceived as quote unquote white trash. I feel like this stigma in this, this feeling in America has always been around. I just feel like if anything within the past four to five years based off of the climate of where politics and social media is at, it had an increased presence. And so what I'd like people to do in 2020 is let's, let's forget about politics and let's, let's, let's focus on policy, right? It's like, cause that's two separate things. And I honestly feel like 
if we were focused as the majority of us as a people, if we would focus on policy instead of politics, we would see that we would all have so much in common, like so much more in common. And so when you think about things, right, like from a policy standpoint, 1% of America, 1% of the people in America own 99% of the wealth, right? It's a universal thing. That's not a black, white, Latina, Asian, Polynesian, whatever you are. That's not, no, it doesn't matter. It's 1% of America, 1% of the people in America own 99% of the wealth. So that means 99% of us are left with 1% of the wealth. And so you have people who are like, I'd say people who fit this stigma of the a angry white man or the quote unquote white trash of America who recently have a very public outcry of of uh, anger that they used to be the middle class. Some of them never were, but they used to be the middle class and they feel like they've been forgotten behind. Um, and that their jobs are being taken and uh, they're, they're uh, being ostracized and they're, and they're made to be the bad guy, right? And so here's the, here's the challenge that I have, right? The challenge that I have is I would like for those particular people, and I'm not saying that they're not wrong, they're not right or wrong. I'm saying, but what if those people looked at the policies, right? the policies that that got you to the point of feeling that way if you really looked at the policies that got you to feeling that way it's been rigged from the jump like <laughs> this thing has been set up for everyone to fail and when one percent of the people own 99 percent of the wealth that means the policies have been they've been screwing everybody it's not just you they're screwing everyone the middle class in america is pretty much non-existent and why is that? There's for several reasons. These jobs that people once had don't exist anymore. None. For for several reasons, though. You can, you can blame it on, like, corporations taking over, uh, technologies going in a different direction, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the industries are, are going away from, like, factory jobs, like car. people. A lot of people used to be paying for their families and taking care of full families off of a car factory job. Those jobs don't exist, and they're never coming back. And so why is that? Like I said, partially technology, partially society, or you can really blame it on policy. The rest of the world, right? The rest of the world and other and other modern societies. My phone is just dinging. And other mo this is a long one too. So if you don't watch it, maybe okay, whatever. But at least I'm giving my opinion. And other modern societies have kept up with the change of culture, and that's partially because of the policy they they have in place in their governments. So whether you want to talk about universal health care, like th that America is literally the last country, the last major country in the world that doesn't have some form of a universal health care. Canada, they have free health care, free health care. And yes, every system has flaws. So I'm not saying, you know, it's the best situation over there. But if you're a citizen, you don't have to worry about, am I going to be able to afford this bill? Am I going to be able to take, be taken care of if I walk in, right? Policy. We're not talking about politics. Policy. I think. Why is this thing getting so dark? Let me fix this. I think it it it's a universal thing in America that we believe that you should be able to have a job, right? And you should be able to provide for your family. You shouldn't have to work two to three jobs to do that. You should be able to have a job, make a living, and provide for your family. That is a universal thing. That's not a white thing. That's not a black thing. That's just a thing, right? And so we have to look at, okay, well, what are the jobs that are available? The, how much does minimum wage pay? Um, why is it that certain jobs pay more? Certain jobs don't pay more, et cetera, et cetera, right? So many things. But like I said, if we looked at policy, and so here's the thing that I, I honestly think is really kind of transpired. I, I think that as African American people and people of color, predominantly of color in America, we've been in a position of struggle from the jump. Like, you know what I'm saying? We came here slavery, after slavery. Okay, we had all types of like Jim Crow, segregation. We, we've never been at the top. So 
it's not to say that it's not that big of a deal for us, but it's something that we're accustomed to, if that makes any sense. We're very accustomed to the majority of our people not being in the middle class or the upper class. So it's like, okay, we're trying to get there. Latino people, uh, you could say they have a similar uh, thing. And we're going to talk about people who come over here um, in a non-legal form, whatever the situation is. Asian people could have a similar storyline. They're like, okay, well, we've never really been in the top one ten percent No. I think the issue or the reason why the climate, I'm going to say the issue, but the reason why the climate has changed, particularly for white people in America, as far as the way that they feel, is because that they used to be in that position. Like, you know what I'm saying? They used the middle class was them it was them for years and they were thriving and they were literally thriving i mean they were able to get houses mortgages have jobs and not necessarily have to have college education to take care of the family that was them and then now they're in the same position like the rest of us were and when i say us i'm just, I'm just saying people of color were welcome to the party literally and that's not to say that it is okay, because it is not okay. But I think that your issue is not necessarily with politics. I think people are getting consumed by the politics of the Democrats want this and the Republicans want this and blah, 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 blah. Let's start looking at policies. What are policies that is going to benefit people who are in the lower class and the middle class? And so... One thing I, 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 I try not to say, like, you vote for who it is you want to vote. I just, you know what I want you to do is I want you to get out there and vote. But one thing I say that Trump did so well in 2016 is that he spoke to those people. He really, he made an effort to speak to those people at, at a time where, uh, the, you could say, the Democratic candidates were not. They were not making an effort to, to speak and communicate to those people. And so the question is we all have to ask ourselves is, Four years later, have the policies really changed? And I'm not going to answer this for you. This is something that I would like you to research yourself. Have the policies really changed? Are there any, ask yourself, are, in, are there any more jobs for people who don't have college degrees and are trying to get a job? And if they get a job, are they being paid enough to take care of their family? Right? Right? So that's question number one. Two, who did the tax cuts benefit? Did they benefit you? Did they benefit you? And when I say you, I'm saying the people who are quote unquote perceived to be this the white trash or the lower class of white people. Did those tax cut benefit you? And we're talking about just over the course of four, four years. Did they? Did you get more money back on your taxes? That's something you could just look up. Did you do that? Third question. Third question I would ask. Did any of you get your jobs back? So a lot of, a lot of people are complaining about car, uh, the car industry being different, coal industry. Did anybody get more coal jobs? Let's ask, let's ask ourselves this question. Did anybody get more coal jobs? No. I'm just, I want to know. Just, that's the third question. And four. What policies have been put in place or are trying to be put in place to put you in a better position? What policies have possibly hurt people? Because there was a lot of farmers and stuff that voted for Trump in 2016, right? Like, and now we have this whole trade policy that really kind of hurt farmers. But this is policy. We're talking about policy, not politics. I don't care who it is. It could be an alien in, in the office. What I want to know is what policies are you doing? Now, mind you, we need to ask ourselves the same question for the Democratic candidates. What policies are you going to put in place to help people in America to help people who are in the lower class or the middle class get a stronger middle class or move up in life? What policies are you putting in place? These are questions that I feel like we should really ask ourselves. And I did not mean to make a 20 minute video, but this just turned into a rant. Thank you, Tom. This is what happens when you watch Tom McDonald. Start asking yourself these questions. And then lastly, I would say it's not enough to be angry. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just being angry about it. And it, what does that do? by just being angry 
you have to do something. If you really want to help people, put yourself in the position to help people, whether that's running for office or um, voting or getting the word out. Like, let's stop just being mad about it in 2020. Let's start doing something. Because I, like I said, I feel like the number one issue is this. 1% of America owns 99% of the wealth. That's a problem, bro. That's a big problem. And until we can fix that problem, it's going to be rather... The, the, the last four or five years, let's say it was the people who were perceived as white trash. Okay, well, four or five years from now, it could be another group and another group. And, another, and it, just, it just won't go anywhere. It'll only get worse until we solve that problem. Just saying. Anyway... I have a whole Tom McDonald uh, playlist on the channel. Hit the like button, hit the sub button, watch another video on the channel, comment, cut, give me, con let's have a conversation below. And like I said, for me, it's not politics. I made a whole song saying I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican, I'm an American. We're all American. Well, not all of us. People watch us around the world. But let's have conversation about policy. What can we do different in the comments below? Love you guys. See you next time.